place at the hotel, the Loft Restaurant, which is an all-day dining, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and you know, with a gorgeous view of the ocean. But we're, now we're not going to look at the ocean. We're looking at the cheese area of the restaurant, where there is uh, over 100 cheeses that are offered. Mm -hmm. And then you, you have a degustation set up for your clients. And uh, how do you? What's how do you? We do? customize every plate. Each plate is made specifically to the guest requirements, what they like, what they don't like, and the cheese with a hundred different cheeses. So a hundred different cheeses are from all over the world, right? All over the world. I have probably about anywhere between nine and different, uh, twelve different countries represented. So and then can you mix on the same plate different countries? Absolutely. Fine. Different countries, different styles, different milks, whether it's cow, sheep, or goat. Several different cheeses in each one of the categories. You pronounce every cheese in their local uh, intonation, absolutely. the French cheeses in their, their French intonation, and the Spanish cheeses in the Spanish Absolutely, cheese. absolutely. I order all the cheeses and I uh, research them and know them well. I've been doing the cheese for five years now, so I'm um, pretty thoroughly versed in each one of the cheeses. Let me tell you each one about the cheeses. This one is our perfect bite, which this is the fromage d'Affinois from France. It's a double creme. Very buttery and rich. And what we do is we serve it on our. But well, the cheeses are not displayed yet, right? I, I don't have. I bring them out right before service, uh -huh. and we bring them up to temperature. So, like a good wine, like a good red wine, should be served at about 65 degrees. The cheese should be a little bit warmer than refrigeration temperature. So, so how did you become a cheese lover? Uh, I was born into it. Uh, I was born in New York, and raised just outside of Manhattan and my mother is a huge foodie so from my earliest age I used to take weekly trips into Manhattan and my mother would take me to Murray's Cheese Shop which is the number one cheese shop in the country from birth and get me to taste cheese and then I've been a chef for 15 years now. So now you now you are putting the cheeses on what? This, on this is our homemade Hand rolled honey cashew cracker that I make. I, I literally roll out these crackers, honey cashews. It's got a little bit of a sweetness to it. And what I do is I take local wildflower honey. And then how many different kind of breads or tools do you have for your well, cheeses? There's there's probably seven or eight different breads that we have in house at any time. I normally serve with the cheese course baguette or our homemade date uh, nut bread and our crackers. So tell me why do I see papaya here? Being oh. French, I'm like never, you know, you never cheese, serve cheese with papaya, so but we're in California, so why, what am I seeing? But on our, on our regular cheese plates, we do a mix of organic berries, grapes, and sometimes when I have peak season fruit, when it's just coming into perfection, I'll put a little papaya. To me, I actually like papaya with the sheep's milk cheese. Okay. Uh, and then here I understand those are we jams and they all all homemade. of my homemade jellies, jams, and compliments. How many different ones do you have? I have about 20. Right now I have to refill those. You got me in a just right before service, so I don't have all of them out. But anything from cranberry relish, sherry caramelized onions. A lot of times I take peak season fruit. One of my favorite ones that I just had was plums cooked with cassis and Szechuan pepper. So. I have a lot of creative freedom to mix and match. We have some usual ones, like we always have the ginger spiced apples. And then you store the cheese uh, back in the kitchen, right? Yeah, I have my cooler in the in the in the back. I have it's your cooler. cooler. It's nobody else's cooler. cooler. It's your cooler. Mine. Nobody goes in there but you, lock. right? I have a lock on it. It's my. Oh, you have a lock on it. Oh yeah, it's it's just for the front. So well, here's the the window, right? This is this the cheese cave. So I keep. Majority of my cheeses here, nine to twelve different countries, hundred different cheeses, soft, freestyle, of course, mixed milk, goat's milk, cheese milk, hard each cheese, Spanish, American, domestic. So I, you know yeah, what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to. You have to kick me out of here, otherwise you're gonna have a problem. <laughs> if your big mouth's going in he there, he's gonna crawl right in there and just live there. And right about this time, what is it? About 4:30 right now. Almost five o'clock. I will take all of my hundred different cheeses and I'll display them here, which I'm about to do right after you guys. And so this is our perfect bite: homemade honey cashew. So can cracker. I try? Absolutely, absolutely. We're ready to go. Totally. And 
I'm a cheese lover, so you're good. Good. So, mm. it's well, a, you come here. Can you order just cheeses? You, you don't have to have a full meal. You can do the. You have a cheese menu every cheese dinner. Or every what? plate is sold on the number of cheeses that you would like. So, but I can come here for dinner just for cheese, right? Absolutely. Nothing else. Right? Absolutely. We do have a lot of people come in and do strictly cheese. I like a nice afternoon like this with the sunset. We have our sommeliers on staff. And we pair up wine to pair specifically with the cheese. And to me, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, right on the balcony there, is probably my favorite time to do it. You can sit and enjoy wine, have cheese. We can make a, a large plate, a small plate. My friend Manny down there is the master bistro chef over here. So you have, so roast you have chickens right broiled. now, right? Mm -hmm. And then what wood are you using for those? We're using oak wood. Oh, oak okay. you know, Little oak wood gives it a, a mellow smokiness. It's not like, uh, like hickory can be a little bit strong. So we, we do prefer oak. It gives a nice mellow smoky flavor. And we brine our chicken too so they marinate it overnight. And I think that's probably the best way to, to prepare it. Okay, great. Thank you so much. You're